why the book is, I believe, uh, necessary at this time. It's because the world has been tackling corruption uh, seriously for the last 15 years. It's not very long, but the international donor community and the international community generally has been focusing on this subject for 15 years. Much money has been poured into the effort. Many resources have been devoted to the effort with, I have to say, very little result. If one looks at the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index over the 15 years that it has been measuring countries' uh, perceptions of corruption, one finds the overall picture that emerges is one of flatlining. The great majority of countries have uh, not improved their situation. The great majority of countries have moved up or down by less than a point on the 10-point scale. Quite a number of countries have declined during that period by more than a point. And there's just a handful that have improved their score by more than a point. So despite the international community's efforts, the results have been dismal. And it's prompted me to write this little book because uh, from my Hong Kong experience and my experience in working in some 48 countries around the world since I stepped down from my job uh, just before the handover to China. My experience uh, shows me that there is a need for countries to hearken to the basics. There is a need for them to simplify, clarify, and rationalize their fight against corruption. It's a fight that too often has become confused with the notion of good governance. Good governance and anti-corruption are not the same thing. Governance is about how to run things. Anti-corruption is about upholding a value, a value that says that bribery is wrong. And we say that in all our countries. It's a serious criminal offense in our, all our penal codes. If you run the two together, if you speak of them in the same breath, if you believe that corruption can be cured simply by governance reforms, then I'm afraid the result is disappointing, as we have seen. The reason, I believe, is simple. Any governance reform that is attempted is promptly undermined by the pre-existing corruption. The governance reform does not, cannot take root. I'm not for a moment suggesting that one has to be done before the other can be undertaken. No. The two have to go in parallel at the same time. Our countries usually need some form of governance reform. That is true. They also need effective anti-corruption. That is equally true. The two must be done at the same time, must run in parallel. But if we confuse the two, it's hardly surprising that the effort is so disappointing, or has been so disappointing, as we see from the figures up to now.